Hello everyone, I'm Matt Gazzani from Strawware Research Center. Today I will go through the step-by-step -step process of building a staff gauge and installing it at the site of your sensor station. The staff gauge is an important instrument with developing the discharge rating curve. It will also be useful in calculating sediment and salt loads once your grab sample rating curves are ready to do so. I will first go over the parts Stroud uses to build a staff gauge as well as the process of assembling it before going into the field. Then I will walk through how to install the built staff gauge at your sensor station. This video only shows a single way to build and install a staff gauge. There are a few vendors that sell staff gauges and parts that we use. There are different ways to install a staff gauge depending on the site. Other organizations like USGS have their own methods, so bear in mind that this is only a single way of doing this. The first step in the process is purchasing the parts needed to build the staff gauge and the parts necessary for installing at the sensor station site. Most of the parts we use come from Lowe's hardware, but most can likely be found from other vendors as well. Unless specified, the following parts mentioned were purchased from Lowe's hardware. The parts to build the staff gauge include one 1 meter staff gauge ruler from Oregon Ruler Company, four stainless steel flat washers with dimensions of a quarter inch by half inch, four stainless steel flat washers with the dimensions of a quarter inch by a quarter inch, four quarter inch stainless steel nylon insert lock nuts, four quarter inch stainless steel carriage bolts with a length of 1.5 inches, four half inch stainless steel conduit hangers, four quarter inch stainless steel hex bolts, and four quarter inch stainless steel hex nuts. The parts to install the staff gauge on site include one half inch by five foot black iron pipe, one half inch by three foot black iron pipe, one half inch diameter black iron coupling, and one half inch diameter black iron cap. For sites located on large streams and rivers, more parts will be needed to be purchased to extend the ability to measure water depth. Once in possession of the staff gauge parts, you will need to collect the following tools to build the staff gauge. A socket wrench with a 7 16 inch bit and a manual 7 16 inch wrench. Start the process off by removing the bolts and nuts that come with the four half inch stainless steel conduit hangers. The nuts and bolts that come with the conduits are made of a different metal that will degrade over time in the field. They will be replaced with the four quarter inch stainless steel nylon insert lock nuts and the four quarter inch stainless steel carriage bolts. Take a stainless steel conduit hanger and widen it with your hands. Insert a quarter inch stainless steel hex bolt into the conduit hanger with a stainless steel quarter inch by half inch flat washer on the other side. Insert the trio of parts into the back side of the staff gauge ruler. Repeat this for the three other holes in the staff gauge ruler. There are two different hole shapes on the conduit hangers. Twist the conduits to line up the same hole shape. However, there isn't a specific side needed for them to line up on. Flip the staff gauge ruler over to the front where the numerical markers are found. Place a stainless steel quarter inch by quarter inch flat washer over each hex bolt. Twist on a quarter inch stainless steel hex nut onto each hex bolt. Take the manual 7 16 inch wrench and slip it over the head of the hex bolt on the back end of the staff gauge ruler. Slip the socket wrench with a 7 16 inch bit over the hex nut found on the front of the staff gauge ruler. Using the manual wrench in your fingers, keep the conduit hanger and hex bolt still. Begin tightening everything with the socket wrench. Be sure the conduits stay parallel with the staff gauge ruler edge and the same holes remain lined up. Repeat this for the other three conduits. Pinch each conduit closed with your fingers. Insert a quarter inch stainless steel carriage bolt into each conduit hanger. Screw a quarter inch stainless steel nylon insert lock nut onto the other end of the carriage bolt. Use the socket wrench to tighten it a bit to keep the nut from falling off, but loose enough to allow the staff gauge to be slipped onto a half inch pipe. Before traveling to the site to install the staff gauge, be sure to bring the following. The built staff gauge, one half inch by five foot black iron pipe, one half inch by three foot black iron pipe, one half inch diameter black iron coupling, one half inch diameter black iron cap, an iron rod meant to start a hole in the stream bed, a metal mallet for hammering the black iron pipe into the stream bed, a wood block to protect the black iron pipe and coupling from being smashed during hammering, a socket wrench, a manual wrench, 
and the field visit data sheet to record when the staff gauge was installed. Once on site, fill out a field visit data sheet by filling in the metadata section. Begin locating a spot in the stream relatively close to the sensor bundle to install the staff gauge. The staff gauge should be close to the sensor bundle but no closer than 3 feet. A close proximity allows the relationship between the sensor depth and staff gauge height to be more reliable when making rating curves. The staff gauge should be located in a deep spot in the stream to allow continuous function even during low flow periods. The staff gauge should be able to be read by someone from the stream bank without any visual interference from vegetation or debris. Once a spot has been selected, use the iron rod to do a preliminary test for the stability of the stream bed. Sandy locations are areas where the bar can be pushed into the stream bed by hand should not be considered. The location should provide at least moderate resistance when testing. The location should also provide stable ground to prevent the staff gauge from falling or being torn out from the stream bed. Once the spot has passed the preliminary test, use the metal mallet and the iron rod to pre-dig a hole for the 5 foot black iron pipe. The chosen spot should allow the iron rod to be driven at least one foot into the stream bed with some resistance. If a sudden stop happens while hammering the iron rod before reaching the one foot minimum, a new hole should be started within the selected location. If the selected spot does not provide appropriate stability for the iron rod, perform another search for a spot to place the staff gauge. After the iron rod has been hammered at least one foot into the stream bed, grab the 5 foot black iron pipe and switch its placement with the iron rod so that the pipe is located in the hole that was pre dug with the iron rod. With the metal mallet and a wood block placed on top of the 5 foot black iron pipe, protecting the threads from damage, begin hammering the pipe into the stream bed. The pipe should be driven at least 2 feet into the ground. Perform a couple twist tests when hammering to check stability. The iron pipe should turn minimally, if at all. If the pipe can be easily turned with a hand, a new spot needs to be selected. Once the first pipe is installed, slip the staff gauge ruler onto it and slide it down until the ruler touches the stream bed. Take the black iron coupling and screw it onto the pipe. Then take the 3 foot black iron pipe and slip it through any of the staff gauge ruler's conduit hangers and screw it into the black coupling. The next step depends on the size of your stream and what the expected high flow depth would be. If your site is on a small stream, tighten the nut and bolt on each of the conduit hangers with a socket wrench. Then use the manual wrench for the last couple of turns until the conduit is secure around the black iron pipe. If a conduit is located under the water, use the manual wrench to tighten it since a socket wrench cannot get submerged into water. Check if either staff gauge ruler can turn or move. Take the black iron cap and screw it onto the 3 foot pipe. If your site is on a medium stream, slip on an additional staff gauge ruler that is a half foot meter in length. Tighten the nut and bolt on each of the conduit hangers with the socket wrench. Repeat the same tightening process and cautionary steps mentioned in the small stream scenario. Then attach the black iron cap onto the 3 foot pipe. If your site is on a large stream, tighten the nut and bolt on each of the conduit hangers with the socket wrench. Repeat the same tightening process and cautionary steps as the first scenario. Then screw the black iron cap onto the 3 foot pipe. Repeat the installation steps for a second separate staff gauge. This one will be installed on the stream bank. The bottom edge of the second staff gauge should line up with the top edge of the first in-stream staff gauge. The details of this process will be talked about in the next section of this video. Record in the notes section that you installed the staff gauge and indicate which setup you used. Be sure to take pictures of the installation to monitor how effective the sighting and the chosen setup are performing in field. Finish filling out the field visit data sheet by completing the sensor station maintenance and other information sections before leaving the site. As a note before explaining Stroud's approach to installing a staff gauge at a large stream site and or a site commonly prone to high flow events, I want to take the opportunity to explain that this setup is still in development at Stroud Water Research Center and may go through several designs before a uniform system is finalized. Even when a system is finalized, there may be special cases where a suggested system will not work. Sites along large streams and rivers should be considered for a large stream setup. Large streams during high flow periods have the ability to carry large debris that can bend, break, or rip out staff gauges. Large streams also have water depths higher than the initial 1 meter staff gauge can handle, so extensions will be necessary. Other sites, as we learned for the past two years, will show the need for a large stream setup over time. Some signs of the need include 
A staff gauge found bent at extreme angle after a storm period on site. A staff gauge found downstream of the site with an extreme bend. And large pieces of debris building up around the staff gauge location over time. This situation of possible staff gauge destruction is a result from the staff gauge sighting being dictated by where the sensor station is installed, rather than being based on the closest in-stream structure. This allows more flexibility on where groups can focus their monitoring efforts, even the ability to track conditions on small tributaries. However, without the staff gauge being supported by or attached to a sturdy structure, it is open to wear and tear from high flow events. The current tactic in reducing the risk of damage to the staff gauge is set up in the following way. Drive a 5 foot black iron pipe into the stream bed local to the sensor bundle and attach a 1 meter staff gauge roller to it. Cap the pipe with an iron cap. Wrap and attach a spool of nylon string to the 5 foot black iron pipe so that the line touches the top edge of the staff gauge roller when tightly unspooled. Tightly unwind the nylon string towards the stream bank. Use your eyes to roughly level the string from the staff gauge to the stream bank. Use a piece of rebar to mark a potential spot on the stream bank for the second staff gauge and wrap the nylon string around it. Attach two line levelers, one on each end of the string to get a more accurate leveling. Move the line up and down the rebar to perfect the leveling of the string. You can even move the rebar itself up and down the stream bank until the line is leveled on both ends. Drive another 5 foot black iron pipe to the side and a little below the rebar. Attach a 1 meter staff gauge ruler to this pipe. Be sure the bottom of the ruler is leveled with the nylon string before tightening. Cap the stream bank staff gauge with an iron cap as well. This tactic reduces the height of the in-stream staff gauge, reducing the probability of being hit in or ripped out of the stream during a flood event. This also allows the bank installed staff gauge to serve as a reference if there is a need to reinstall a staff gauge in the stream. This tactic does have its limits on where it can be installed since riprap in rocky areas can be difficult to hammer into and sandy stream banks will quickly erode. This does not fully prevent the in-stream staff gauge from being wrecked by debris. Further testing and improvements will occur over time. This concludes the process on building and installing a staff gauge for your sensor station site. A staff gauge will be necessary when developing a discharge rating curve, so proper sighting and construction is necessary for the longevity of this tool. As mentioned before, the parts and processes used in this video are used by Stroudwar Research Center's Citizen Science Department, but are not the only materials and methods available to sensor station users. Thank you for watching. I'm Makazani from Stroudwar Research Center.